months of research, reading the data, talking to the experts, studying pre-season, listening to manager quotes, and it's all come down to this. Welcome to FBO, mate. My name is Dan. I have finally perfected my fantasy team. Make sure you leave a like for good karma in game week one for yours. It's time to lock it in. Okay, so with the deadline just a day away, it's time for me to lock in my final team video for the game week one of the new season. I cannot believe we are here already and I'm excited to share this team with you because I think everything that's come together over the past month has really come down to this and building a really, really strong team ready for the season to get that brilliant start for the new FPL season and hopefully get a really nice rank as well. So guys, let's start off with a goalkeeper. I want to throw some players on this pitch and it's actually going to be Henderson. So Henderson, in my opinion, is the best 4.5 million goalkeeper. He's now confirmed as the first choice for Crystal Palace, which is really good information. Four of the top six scoring goalkeepers last season were 4.5 million or less. So what we're going to try and do here is save a little bit of money by going for a cheaper goalkeeper. Because every year, those expensive goalkeepers, well, there's never much difference between the points that they get and the points the cheap goalkeepers get. And a lot of that is to do with the fact that the goalkeepers from big teams teams, typically they don't make many saves and they don't get many bonus points. So really, even if a Raya, for example, can get you six points, two points, six points, two points, well, maybe a cheaper goalkeeper like Henderson might get a eight points, three points, three points, two points or something like that. And over the course of the season, it usually works out about the same, about even for the two positions. So it's marginal. It's marginal. I don't want to spend too much money in goal. Now, um, why Henderson over the other 4.5 million goalkeepers? So Crystal Palace are the fourth best defense in the Premier League going off last season numbers. And Chelsea is really the only difficult fixture in the opening six. And Palace, they don't concede too many shots from inside the box. So I think there might be some opportunity for Henderson to pick up some save points as well from uh, some of these teams who are kind of shooting from those weaker areas. And before we go on to the defenders, I should say, guys, that last season, Fantasy Football Hub members won over 50,000 mini leagues between them. So there's a good chance that whoever won your mini league last season was a Hub Premium user. No wonder you couldn't catch them up. Now, I've been using Hub tools such as their AI team rating tool, points predictors, optostats, and fixture analyzer to access more information and improve my game dramatically over the past four years. That is not just me saying that. It has actually helped me improve as a manager so much and win more of my mini league. So this, guys, is your final chance to get 50% off your hub subscription using the link in the video description. And if you sign up before the game week one deadline, they will give you your money back if you don't win your mini league. That is how confident they are that these tools will help you win your mini league. So guys, I couldn't recommend them enough. Don't forget it. Get started. Use the link in the description to claim this deal now before it's too late. Now, let's have a look at some defenders next. So my first defender is going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold from Liverpool, statistically the third best defence in the league. Now, not quite as good as Arsenal, who are way out in front, but there's still something to be said about the Liverpool defence, particularly when we look at the good fixtures, because we find that defenders typically benefit more from good runs of fixtures, and Liverpool certainly have that. Trent also has great fixtures, set pieces, and fullbacks under the new manager on a slot seem to be very, very high and very narrow during the preseason what we've seen so far. So I think Trent will have more opportunities to get involved in goals, just like maybe we saw a few seasons ago under Klopp. You know, he's going to be right back in it with those attacking returns. I also have noticed that Trent actually had an underrated season last year. A lot of people thought he had a bad season, but that was mostly due to injury. And when he was playing, he was typically a pretty good point scorer. In fact, uh, among defenders in FPL last year, Trent was the third highest scoring defender per start last season. Only White and Zinchenko did better. So if we're looking for a player who is going to start, we can't do too much better than Trent other than maybe some of those Arsenal defenders in the more favourable fixtures. And even that is White and Zinchenko. It's not Gabriel or Saliba. Could be really, really good here. Next up, another defender is going to be Gavardio. Now, he proved to be a great attacking fullback at the end of last season with four goals and two assists in the last seven games of the season. Absolutely amazing stuff. Now, going into game week one, he's probably going to be a little less attacking due to how Man City I expect them to set up in game week one. And if you want to find out how I expect Man City as well as all of the other teams in the Premier League to set up for game week one, make sure you do 
to check out my lineups video that I released yesterday. It's really useful if you want to get an idea of who's going to be playing and where they're going to be playing on the pitch. Now, when Foden is back in particular for this Man City team, that will allow Gvardiol to play higher on the left-hand side of the pitch. And that could happen in game week two, which is at home against Ipswich. So even though this Chelsea game, I don't think is going to be an amazing haul necessarily for Gavardio, I think game week two has a huge opportunity there for anyone picking him. So I do like this pick. And my final defender is going to be Daniel Munoz. Daniel is a great name, by the way, but that is not why I have picked him. So Munoz is a goal-scoring defender. And that people don't really really realise he's a goal-scoring defender because he didn't score any goals in the Premier League last season. However, he scored five goals in 16 games in the Belgium League before his January transfer last year. He scored twice and assisted once in five games during the Copa America over the summer. He only got four assists in 16 Premier League games last season, but he did have two goals disallowed. We saw a situation where Emerson scored an own goal where he uh, he actually, uh, Munoz had a tap-in chance. That was back in game week 34 of last season. And his positioning on the pitch is ridiculously high. He essentially plays as an inside right forward in many ways. He's constantly in the box when Crystal Palace are on the attack. That is his role in the team. So if you've watched a lot of Crystal Palace during the second half of last season, you will definitely know, you will definitely have identified that the stats don't tell the full picture with Munoz and by the way his underlying stats are really good as well he's capable of huge returns and as we mentioned Crystal Palace they're not such a bad defense either are they so really really nice pick and I like this one but of course guys there is an elephant in the room because I have double Palace defense now I'm personally trying to think about each player individually and try and remove any illogical feelings when picking my fantasy team now Going individually, I believe Henderson is the best 4.5 million goalkeeper. Therefore, I should pick him. And I also think Munoz has insane attacking potential and could be one of the top maybe three uh, goals, uh, well, scoring, uh, point scoring defenders in FPL this year. And therefore, I should pick him, particularly during a decent fixture run. So I love each pick individually. So why shouldn't I pick them? Now, yes, technically, if Palace you lose a clean sheet, it's double jeopardy. I lose two clean sheets, right? But it works both ways and it has equal potential to go right as it does wrong. So when we're looking at those odds, it looks, you know, it's no different. As long as you're picking the players you like, it doesn't really matter whether you've doubled up necessarily. And I think Henderson and Munoz occupy such different niches uh, as FPL picks that it arguably doesn't really matter, um, you know, that they play for the same team because I want them for such very, very different reasons. So, Given that Palace, you know, pretty decent clean sheet potential there anyway. They kept clean sheets against Liverpool, Newcastle, United, Villa, under Glasner last season, which is really good. So it could easily happen again. Um, in general, my defence is super attacking. Um, last season's clean sheet potential, uh, you know, it's, it's down. You know, we didn't see too many clean sheets last season. And the changes to the bonus point system will also make it harder for defenders to get bonus points particularly if they're not getting attacking returns and attacking actions. Now, bookies and statisticians are also projecting less clean sheets this year again. So I think the trend this year, will we will see more attacking defenders doing well in FPL. And I want to try and get ahead of of that trend based on all of the information and projections that we see during preseason. Let's get ahead of the game and be proactive rather than reactive with our picks. That's a big, big ethos of mine in FPL. Saka is going to be my first midfielder. I like these fixtures from an attacker's point of view. Both Villa and Spurs bottom half of the table last season for defensive numbers last year. Uh, also, Saka has penalties. He has that consistency. He's nailed on and ready to go in this Arsenal team. Team from game week one where they have a really nice fixture at Wolves at home and I think he will seriously benefit from the new bonus point system as well which is going to reward players who get fouled often and <laughs> we know Saka gets fouled a lot. Anyway, uh, Saka, good price point where I can switch to a Son, Palmer, Foden or whoever else I want to if I need to. So we've got that player around that price ready to move to another position if things do go wrong with Saka. But knowing Saka, I don't think they will go wrong. 
Before we pick the next midfielder, who by the way is a doozy, have you guys subscribed to the channel yet? If you haven't, why not? It's completely free and you can follow along with my team videos every single week. We also have unique and easy to digest FPL content that you won't find anywhere else. So tell me what's stopping you. Oh, and, and make sure you've liked the video for that good karma in game week one. Let's have a look at the next pick. So let's just throw him on the pitch. Diogo Jota. Here is a fun fact. Of the players who played any significant minutes last season, Jota had the second best points per 90 rate in the league. Uh, only Elise beat him. Per 90, he scored more points than Haaland, Palmer, and perhaps most importantly, more than Salah. When we know Jota will play, he can match and even beat Salah for points. And at the beginning of the season, it is expected that Jota is going to be starting in the striker position. Now, Dar Darwin is supposedly not quite ready in terms of both fixtures, uh, well, fitness and tactically, I suppose. And therefore, we have at least the first few game weeks of Jota starting in that striker position. So, you know, we've got that, we've got that Ipswich Town fixture in game week one. That's like a guarantee that Jota will start in that one, which is, which is brilliant. So you have at least for the first few game weeks, you have a Salah quality FPL pick, but you get to save an insane 5 million from your budget. The problem is is what happens next. It's very possible that he could get benched eventually, he could get injured, so you have to have a plan for a worst case scenario. You may need to spend a transfer here or have someone on your bench that can cover if needed, but even in the worst case scenario, you get to take advantage of the great upside during those early game weeks, and if all goes well, you've got a Salah light and five million in the bank to spend on the rest of your team. My one piece of advice if going for Jota is don't pick any other rotation risk players in your your first 11. If you suddenly have multiple players all getting rotated or injured, you know, you're going to have big problems there. So if you are going for a somewhat risky pick in Jota, who's a little bit risky in the medium term, try and limit that in other areas of your field. And that's going to be absolutely fine. Not everyone in your entire squad needs to be safe, but you do have to strike a bit of a balance there. Eberechi Eza is going to be our next pick. Set pieces, penalties, great fixtures, a great uh, attacking perspective uh, for those fixtures. Anyway, Way. We've got the likes of Chelsea, which I think is a good fixture for an attacker, even if it's not so great for a Henderson or a Munoz. Now, Ezet thrived under Glasner in the second half of the season. Six goals, three assists in 11 games under Glasner. Another player who will benefit a lot from the new bonus point system as well, because the new bonus point system also rewards players who take a lot of shots on target. And Ezet is definitely one of those guys. So I think Ezet is a pretty obvious pick to go for. Everyone seems to love him in the world of FPL. So let's move on to Nkunku. He's back. He's been fully back and fit since the start of May. He's had a full pre-season and we know what this guy has done before. In the season before last, he scored 16 goals and 6 assists in 25 games in the Bundesliga. The year before that, 20 goals and 15 assists in 34 games in the Bundesliga. He was honestly, not so long ago, considered one of the best players in world football. Maybe not the very, very best, but certainly one of those elite players in world football and everyone wanted to have him at their club. But unfortunately, since then, he has struggled a bit with injury. But he's back and he costs just 6.5 million. Now, he's likely to actually play as the striker versus Man City, who will be missing Rodri, Stones and Walker. So, big opportunity for a Chelsea team that did very well against Man City last season. And there was lots of goals in that game. So, I like Nkunku, but I have cooled on him a little bit. You know, I like this pick. I could be persuaded to remove him. I am tempted to downgrade him to Smith Rowe, but if I was to do that, I'm not sure where I would spend the rest of the money because I really like the rest of my team. I don't feel I need to downgrade Nkunku because I have no need for that extra money. But maybe some of you guys might prefer Smith Rowe. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Into the forward position, we've got Erling Haaland, reliable captain option every week. He is the standout captain at home versus Ipswich in game week two, which is arguably the best captain opportunity of the season, at least before we learn about some double game weeks later on in the year. Um, he might even be the best captain for game week three and four, certainly when we're looking at the projected points on Fantasy Football Hub. Haaland is coming out as, as the top captain pick for two, three and four. So that's pretty interesting there. He's fully rested over the summer, back in full fitness, scoring in preseason, and he has been in every draft I've made so far. 
I cannot see that changing, you know, between now and deadline. I am just set on this pick. I think it's a really, really nice pick. I, I, I love having Haaland in my team. It makes it helps me sleep well at night. But let me know, guys. Are you team Haaland? Are you team Salah? Are you team both? Or are you team neither? I'd be curious to hear from you about that one. Isaac is another lock in my game week one team and it should be a lock in your team as well. No European football for him. He's had a full preseason with no international football where he has looked fit and more importantly sharp. He is on penalties. He scored 21 goals and four assists last season despite only starting 27 games and he actually has better results per start than any other nailed forward other than Haaland. So he's, you know, he's Haaland too in many ways. He's just better than everyone else other than Haaland in that forward position. Like Jota, he's the kind of player where you get premium level points wherever he starts, but for far cheaper at 8.5 million. He also has a 96% pick rate among uh, expert FPL managers. And if you want to learn more about the pick rates of various players uh, or in, in FPL among the elite managers, then make sure you check out my 100 expert video which we release every single week where we can really learn who our experts are picking you know who are the expert picks one of them is definitely Isaac anyway final forward is going to be Rodrigo Muniz who has amazing fixtures uh look at these guys even Manchester United one of the weakest defenses statistically in the in the league last season as were well West Ham who they play in game week four but in between these plum fixtures of United and West Ham we also have Leicester and Ipswich so this is a dream for an attacker it's why I like Smith Rowe as well but we are going for Muniz in this team uh breakthrough season last year with nine goals all in the second half of the season 0.49 XG per 90, which is really good numbers for a player of this price. I just think he's great value for money, uh, for uh, particularly for this really nice run of fixtures at the start of the season. And then when we wildcard, he probably won't make the cut. But for this run of fixtures, for this value for money, I love this pick. I really, really do. Let's bring up the bench next, guys. And our first bench pick is going to be Valdemarsen, who, if I'm totally honest, is a 4 million dud. He's not going to get any points, and I'm going to play Henderson every single week. So, yeah, uh, he's there because he is the backup goalkeeper to Flecken. If Flecken performs poorly or gets injured, that's the only way Valdemarsen is going to get any minutes. But you cannot find another 4 million goalkeeper who, uh, who will get any minutes. So, uh, trust me, I've tried... Feel free to try yourself. You won't find another 4 million goalkeeper who will get any points. We've got Rodgers next. Uh, you know, this is this is Morgan Rodgers from Aston Villa. Cheap backup attacker for just 5 million. And he covers my Aston Villa uh, situation as well because I don't have any other Aston Villa players. Now, Rodgers was amazing in preseason, scoring three goals and getting two assists as well. And I could potentially play Rodgers in game week three versus Leicester if he's looking good. I want to just take a chance on him and see if he does perform. Uh, but mostly he's here in my squad to help me if something goes wrong. If Jota is rotated, if Muniz gets injured, you know, anything happens that, uh, that I'm not happy with. I have a backup without being forced into a transfer. You know, rather than being forced to make a transfer move, I'll just play Rodgers instead. And that's going to be fine. Next up, we've got Barco and Johnson and I'll talk about them as a pair so Barco first of all should be nailed for the first few weeks and he's going to take corners as well even if Kadioglu does sign for Brighton which isn't even done yet by the way guys it's very unlikely that he uh, Kadioglu would be integrated into the first 11 anytime soon even when he does you know, he could play left mid he could play right back quite a versatile player but still Barco is unlikely to be a long-term pick and that's where Johnson comes in now Johnson has has great fixtures from game week three onwards. He's also been playing as a right winger in preseason. He has more attacking potential than any other 4 million defender in the medium to long term. So these two pair really, really well. Two attacking fullbacks, each costing 4 million and each kind of covering each other in a way. So what I will probably look to do is 
see how Barco and Johnson get on over the first few game weeks. And then when maybe Munoz has that difficult game week three fixture, I can look at playing Johnson. Uh, Barco, if he's still starting in game week four, then he has that fixture against Ipswich. And we can look to maybe play some of these defenders occasionally. But I want to monitor everyone first before I commit to anything like that. But it's good to have that opportunity at least. With all three of my first choice defenders being expensive guys, I've chosen not to use rotating defenders and have instead instead gone for cheap defenders on my bench uh, this season. So the money is instead spent on Rodgers because if something goes wrong in my first 11, I'd rather play with an attacking backup than a defensive one as defenders rely more on good fixtures to score points. An attacker is more versatile. If I was to downgrade Rodgers to Winks and maybe move Johnson up to a Mikalenko, for example, well, Mikalenko has a couple of tough fixtures in the opening game week. So I might actually not be so keen on using uh, Mikalenko, even if you know I don't have any other choices and I probably end up making a transfer. So I think Rogers covers me a little bit better. And with the team on the pitch, I want to give you some final notes. So first of all, Captain Isaac. It's a close call with Haaland for me, but Isaac against newly promoted Southampton at home, given Isaac's form during preseason and, and fitness and sharpness, I'm really looking forward to this and I think this could be real potential. Haaland will be my vice captain, but don't get me wrong, if I had Salah, I would probably captain him instead of, you know, Isaac, right? But I don't think there's too much of a gap between Salah and Isaac. So people who don't own Salah, but if you do own Isaac, I think you're going to be fine. I don't think it's too much of an issue. Now, I have, of course, opted for a no Salah draft as I can't see my cap myself captaining Salah very often outside of game week one, of course. And don't believe players like Haaland and Salah. I don't think they're worth having unless you're going to captain them regularly because they are just so expensive, particularly if you can spend the money elsewhere. And it's a little bit more difficult to fit everyone in this year, which is a good thing. Now, I have no Arsenal defenders. I don't want to play my wild card until game week six or game week seven maybe where I can see a lot of fixture swings for my team now during that time Arsenal play three tough away fixtures versus Villa Spurs and City in the opening five and I believe that during this period my other defenders will outscore those Arsenal defenders particularly the Arsenal centre-back now I've also got no Spurs players I love their opening game don't get me wrong against Leicester but I'm not too keen on the fixtures after that, to be honest, to play Everton. And then they've got two really tough fixtures. Uh, I appreciate Son, Slanky and Poro. They're great picks for game week one possibly game week two as well but I know that I would be probably using transfers to remove these kind of guys uh, for game week three and beyond and I'd prefer to try and save my transfers and try and think a little bit more longer term but that's just me uh, particularly when you've got players like Jota you need to be aware of you might need to use a transfer on him so I don't also want to have a potential Spurs issue by game week three as well just don't want that Game week six or game week seven, like I mentioned, are my likely wildcard uh, kind of areas. At that point, I'll be looking to pick up more Arsenal and Spurs players, as well as Aston Villa, Chelsea, and supplementing them with a bit of West Ham and Brighton as well. We have really good fixtures from that kind of area. But there we go. Let me know what you think of this team. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm obviously missing some players. You know, you can't have everyone, but I'm missing some players. But I think I'm missing them for good reason. I know why I don't have those players. And I think that's a good place to start. Before we finish the video, I do also want to show you the Fantasy Football Hub My Team tool and how my team looks on this because I, funnily enough, really value the opinion of the AI and the algorithm that gives you a team rating on this tool. It's like having, uh, you know, like a helper manager helping you out with your decisions. It's, it's really, really useful in that sense because you get that second opinion, it's instantaneous, and if your team rating is reasonably high, then it shows that your team is at least using statistics is looking pretty good. And this is constantly adjusting to make sure it's got the up-to-date information as well. I'm currently on a 97% team rating. Now, other of you guys who are using Fantasy Football Hub, let me know what your team rating is. Is it any higher than 97%? Because... 97% is very, very high. And it means, you know, looking at the statistics and the analytics, to use some more nerdy words, 
it looks good. You know, this team is strong, at least strong on paper. And that's a really good place to be for the start of the season. So this is what I've got here, 97%. Let me know what you've got. Now, uh, we've also, if we go through the game weeks, I've kind of optimized what my team would look like for game week two here. Uh, this is what it looks like in game week three, where we can potentially play Johnson because Johnson is apparently predicted more points than uh, a Daniel Munoz in game week three. Tells you all of this information, of course. Uh, game week four as well. Um, we'll switch Munoz back in. It's just all optimized it all for me to so I know exactly who I need to play and when. And this is before making any transfers as well. My team looks really strong every game week, and it's good to check that through uh, using this app. Of course, guys, if you do want to get your own team rating and start using this tool, it's so, so easy. Click on the link in the description, and you can just upload a screenshot of your FPL team. It will load up your team on the app or the website and just give you a rating simple as that and you can also get suggested transfers if you are a subscribed member to hub um, which is really really useful it kind of gives you suggested transfers every week depending on your budget and how many free transfers you use it tracks it all and kind of gives you suggestions again uh, really really useful for that decision making process so I do enjoy that it does that so it's suggesting that if I downgrade Haaland down to Havertz, then I can afford to take Nkunku to Salah, Munoz to Gabriel, which is definitely a suggestion. Um, of course, if my team rating was lower than 97%, I'd probably be looking to take some suggestions on how to improve it higher. But I think if you're on around 95% or more, you, you, your team is going to be really, really strong. So guys, aim aim for 90, 95% team rating. If you're below 90% team rating, I think you should probably be worried going into game week one. But like I said, guys, uh, super easy to use. Use the link on in the description. You can get a free team rating uh, straight away. Or if you're a subscribing member, you can get suggestions and ac full access to these tools for the full season. It is 50% off right now and you get your money back off your subscription uh, if you subscribe before game week one if you don't win your mini league so, so make sure you guys are signed up using the link in the description now before game week one you are really running out of time and to be honest you want to at least have access to these tools for at least a few hours before the deadline so you can just do your final checks or, and use all of these powerful tools to make sure you are optimized and ready to go for game week one it is the best time to subscribe to fantasy football hub it really is so get it done guys link in the description but there we have it guys thank you so much for watching we'll be back tomorrow for another video so make sure you've liked and subscribed and also there is a video on screen right now that youtube thinks you might like to watch next so why not check that one out as well but until next video i will see you later mates bye bye